That's why it seems like sometimes there's not enough days in the week to get it all done. Last week, I knew we were going to be out of town this week for several days, so last week I spent every day doing two weeks worth of work in one week. And I worked for hours every day doing that just to be able to get away from it for three or four days. But even then, even then, my heart was still where the work was at. And I had to check, you know, to make sure, hold on, make sure this is right. Make, make sure this is up. Make sure this, this is why I, I do that. See, I can't just drop everything, forget about it all, and just get away for a few days. I don't just forget about you when you walk out of here on Sunday morning. I pray for you every day. I don't just forget about you whenever you walk out of here on Tuesday night. You're the reason I get down during the week and say, God, give me something. Give me something that I can share with them. And not just those here, but those out there. Those on the radio stations and those that are listening by way of the internet or the CDs or the cassettes or however the Lord has opened doors for us to reach them. That's why I pray, God, please, give me something that I can give to them. Because of this, because Jesus said, take it, go into the world, take my gospel, take my message, and share it with them. I told you a while ago we are in trouble today if we are satisfied with our four and no more. We are in trouble today if we are satisfied with those that come through our doors and nobody else. We are in trouble today if we are satisfied with the fact that we are sitting on what mankind needs and we're not telling them or sharing with them the answer of the old rugged cross. We're in trouble today. We have become a dead sea if all we ever do is just be here, just exist inside of our four walls, have no outlets whatsoever, take nothing to nobody. We just say, God, pour it in, pour it in, pour it in. He's like, well, uh, you know, if I do, are you going to let any of it out? Amen. Are you going to open the floodgates? Are you going to allow my word to shine through you and to shine through your ministry and to shine through your church? Are you going to allow it to flow out to those that are hungry and thirsty? Amen. You see, what you see here every Sunday morning, and what you see here every Tuesday night don't stop here. When you drop your money in the your offering in the plate, it doesn't just go to keep the lights on here. It doesn't just go to make sure we got water to flush the commode. But it goes for the internet, for the AM radio and the FM radio, and the newsletters, and the tapes, and the CDs, and anything else that God will open the door for for us to do. Amen. I can name you off a list of things that we're doing, but I ain't satisfied. I pray all the time, God, if you'll open the doors, we'll walk through them. Yeah. If you'll open the doors, if you'll make a way, Lord, if you'll show us which direction to go in. I'm not satisfied with just what's going on. Lord, I want to do more. Go into all the world and preach the Great Commission. And without a Great Commission vision, you will never be. We will never be a great church. There's Churches by the scores out there, too many to number in this nation alone that have no vision that goes any farther than their doors. That has no vision that goes any farther from maybe their town. We must hear the words of Jesus when He turned to His disciples. Some of the last words that He would speak to them before He would ascend to the Father. It said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Great Commission vision. Without it, your church will dry up. It'll never be a great church. It'll dry up on the vine. Hallelujah. Your local church should not be it and stop there. We said that already. It bears repeating this morning. And what you see here on Sunday morning and Tuesday night is not all there is. It's not the beginning and the end to what God is doing. Amen. We do this work and we do what God has commissioned us to do not only for you that get to come here every Sunday morning or every Tuesday night and hear the Word, but for those that listen by radio, 
for those that call and say the tapes and the CDs are such a ministry to me. Wow. For those that let us know that they have no local church in their area that preach the Word mm -hmm. like the Word that we yeah. preach here and say we appreciate mm -hmm. what you do. For the 85-year-old man that we get the letter from where he received Jesus reading the newsletter. Amen. Mm -hmm. For the little boy that rode his bicycle around the night at Lamasco when we had the outside service and the last night he got down off his bicycle and he walked over there and knelt down at the altar. Those are the people that we do these kind of things for. For the woman that we received the letter from up in West Virginia in the, in the correctional institution of the jail there that said we gather around the radio every Sunday morning and listen to your program. Those are the kind of people that we do. For the widows and those that are in nursing homes that we hear from. For the people that sent us the letter about the girl that's, that's bedridden and the only communication she can give them is with her eyes. And they said that they'll put on the tapes and the CDs and she lays there and tears rolls down her face yeah. for the joy that they see in that. Hallelujah. For the fact that Jesus Christ commissioned us to take that and share it with people. For the woman that called and said, I was listening to the radio cleaning out my car and your program came on and you were singing. And it was a song she'd heard a hundred times before. And we had sung it before. And when I was preparing the radio programs, I said, Lord, I've I played that song on there before. But I'll do it because you said so. She's cleaning out her car that Sunday afternoon, dry and searching for answers in the simple song, I'm still holding on. Lord, I'll never let you go. And she said the Holy Spirit filled that car and she began to weep and the Lord began to bless her soul. Those are the kind of people that we do what we do. Those are the things. Those are the reports that we hear from people that continue to keep us going, burning the midnight oil. People in Australia that say we listen to your radio station all the time. People in Florida that say we listen to your radio station all the time. People in Canada that say we listen to your radio station all the time. The Great Commission. It's more than just about us. Amen. The doctrine of me, myself, and I has literally became a cancer in the church today yeah. that it is so self-centered, Brother Sleaze, that yeah. it's all about me and nobody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all about yeah. being a better me. It's all about being a better me. It's yeah. all about being a better me. Mm -hmm. Self-centered. Mm -hmm. It was never meant to be that way. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ lived on this earth 33 and a half years and was never self-centered. He came not for Himself, but for you. Yeah. He preached not for Himself, but for the multitudes that heard Him. He climbed the, the, the hill of Calvary and laid down His life on the old rugged cross, not for Himself. He already had His throne in glory and decided to come down and die for you. He did it for you. Never self-centered. But we've become so self-centered that we've got inside of our four walls and we sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. And we've become so spiritually deaf that we can't hear the cries of those that are dying outside of our doors. The Apostle Paul had a vision in the book of Acts. There was a man of Macedonia that appeared to Paul in a vision. And this man said, Paul, come over into Macedonia and help us. And Paul arose and the Bible says immediately he began to figure out a way to get to Macedonia to build a big recreation center here. To build a big fancy church on the street or no. He said we endeavored to take the gospel to Macedonia because that was the help that they needed. Yeah. Amen. They don't need another fancy building. Yeah. They don't need another fancy yeah. choir. Yeah. They don't need some more boards and some more discussion groups. Yeah. They need Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yeah. And he, Paul said we endeavored from that moment. That's my words. Read it. I give you the Scripture. That's exactly what Paul began to do after he had saw this man from Macedonia in this vision. Come and help us. Come and help us. And Paul didn't say from that moment on we endeavored to go over there and 
build a big cathedral. Go over there. They need a recreation center is what they need. They, the kids, you know, they're, they're having such a rough time. We need to build them a place to play basketball. No, you need to tell them about Jesus. Amen. Amen. You need to tell them about Jesus. Well, what they need is a food bank. And listen, I love it that we have food banks. But if you feed their belly and not their soul, you ain't helping them too much. Really? Amen. You're not helping them too much. Oh, you might get them fed in this life. Yeah. But unless you take it beyond that, Brother Sleeves, unless you feed their spirit, this life going to be over real soon. And eternity is forever. But Paul said, we endeavored to take them the gospel. Because this man of Macedonia was crying, come over and help us. That's Acts 16, 9 and 10. It says, after you had the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Did you hear that? He said, we knew that God had called us not to go build a multi-million dollar ministry facility, but to go and tell them about Jesus. To take them the gospel. When Peter and John went up to the temple there at the hour of prayer, the man's laying there laying. And the Bible says he looks up at them expecting to receive something. Peter was saying, we know the words. We have it in our songs, not an exact quote, but close enough. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give to thee. What we do is we look at a lamb at the gate and say, well, silver and gold have I none. What I got you ain't going to get none either. Amen. I got what you need. I got what you have to have, but I ain't going to give you any. That's the mindset of most church people. You wouldn't even know there's a Christian unless you asked them. Because they're not ready, willing, and able to share it with you. But Jesus said that a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Jesus said that you are the light of the world. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Jesus would say in Matthew 9 and 35, well, the Bible would say about Jesus that He went about all the cities and villages teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing every sickness and every disease among them. Listen to this, among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And he says this to his disciples The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest. That He will send laborers into the harvest fields. That He will send laborers. You see, the harvest, oh, it's white. There are souls that are lost and undone. But where are the workers? Where are those that are willing to take the Gospel to the world? I'm closing this morning. Jesus Christ would... The words that He spoke to them that day before He ascended, Brother Sleece, they're still as real today as they were then. Go into all the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. Jesus gave that charge and it still echoes from heaven, Brother Tyler. As long as there is a lost soul that needs to hear about Jesus, it will be your job to do something to reach them. I know we can't do it all, but if the if the members in the body of Christ would all work together, the work could be done. I know that we cannot reach everybody, but I'm telling you, there are some people we can reach that other people can't. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Amen? There are some people that, Brother Tyler, you can reach. Reach them with the truth. Amen. Reach them with the truth that I can't. You can say, well, I'm going to send my money to this preacher because he's reaching millions. He may be reaching millions, but he ain't reaching all of them. There are some people you can reach that that preacher can't reach. There's some people that will listen to you or watch your life that ain't paying no attention to that preacher. And Jesus commissions us to take the Gospel to the world. And then Paul hears the cry, not just the cry of that Macedonian man, but it's really the cry